Discover today, Sathic Alkin's first science behind video. I'm Marta, a pharmacist and formulator expert at the Sathic Alkin Pharmaceuticals Department. And today, we will talk about vaccine excipients and adjuvants. You may know us for our API activity, but did you know that Sathic Alkin also provides vaccines excipients and adjuvants for reliable and efficient development? While its active part is of great importance, a vaccine contains several other molecules that are equally essential to ensure its safety, efficacy, and extend its shelf life. Vaccines come mainly in two forms. The active part can be a pathogen that has been rendered harmless, in which case they are said to be attenuated. In general, they protect well on their own and do not need adjuvants and excipients. They can also be made from a dead pathogen or antigenic fragments, such as those currently used in COVID vaccines. They are called inactivated vaccines and are those that require the addition of additives and excipients. But what is the difference between an adjuvant and an excipient? Well, an adjuvant is used to amplify the efficiency of the vaccine by boosting the immune response, for example. An excipient is not involved in the vaccine's activity, but ensures stability, extends its shelf life, and prevents bacterial contamination. Let's see some adjuvant examples, starting with aluminum additives. They are the most commonly used adjuvant in vaccines and have been for more than 80 years. Aluminum salts, such as aluminum hydroxide and aluminum hydroxyphosphate, ensure slow release and better absorption of the vaccine by the immune system. Oily adjuvants. Oily substances can enhance the immune response. Oily adjuvants allow the formulation of vaccine emulsions in the presence of an aqueous phase containing the antigen. Lipid nanoparticles. To protect and improve the delivery of the active substance, lipid nanoparticles can be used to encapsulate the antigen. This is the case of the latest mRNA vaccine. Let's move to the excipients used to stabilize the vaccine, extend the shelf life, and preserve the antigens. Diluents are used to obtain the desired concentration just before use. Sterile water is commonly used. Preservatives avoid any contamination once the vial is opened, and especially when you intend to vaccinate several people. The most commonly used are formaldehyde, the phenol family, but also benzylconium chloride and sodium metabisulfite. Stabilizers prevent chemical reactions from incurring inside the vaccine and prevent the vaccine components from attaching to the vaccine vial. Stabilizing agents help maintain the quality of the vaccine during its lifetime. We can use sugars like sucrose to improve viscosity, as well as amino acids, gelatin, and proteins. Buffer agents are used to maintain the pH balance for the vaccine as it approaches human pH. Popular buffers include sodium chloride, potassium chloride, sodium hydroxide, succinic acid, sodium bicarbonate, and sodium carbonate. Need any of these ingredients? Don't hesitate any longer. Get in touch with our sales representatives who will be able to advise you on the formulation of your future vaccine. Thanks for your attention. Let's keep in touch. Follow us on LinkedIn for monthly content.